Lita loves syrup of squill on her groat cakes, but she hasn't seen a jar in over a year. Brunt misses the rotting vegetation of Ferenginar the most, and Moogie's ears haven't been this tight in centuries. Hello, everybody, and <laughs> welcome to The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello, everybody. We're just going to cut to the chase here, everybody. Mr. Ira Stephen Bear is here today. Hello, hello, hello. We couldn't be happier. This is the best day ever. Thank you so much for joining us. We're doing a review of Deep Space Nine, Season 6, Episode 10, The Magnificent Ferengi, written by, what do you know, Mr. Ira Stephen Bear and Hans Beimler. It's directed by, who is that? Chip yeah, Chip, I wanted to Chip Chalmers. I didn't recognize that name, but we'll hopefully he, talk he about it. He was an AD on TNG. Got it. Oh. Interesting. He was an AD, and he also directed for them, he did Captain's Holiday. Oh, that's a great and, one. And I forgive him. Um, <laughs> no, no Chip, way. Chip, Chip, Chip was. I have I have good memories of Chip. I like Chip. Chip was he was a he was a he was a good guy. So hmm. yeah, and he came back. I forget why, uh, but he had been gone for a while doing other things, and somehow he got the magnificent Ferengi. So this was. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I was just going to say this yeah, was January first, nineteen ninety eight. So you had a, like a one month or so mm -hmm. hiatus. Came back. This is our first episode of nineteen ninety eight. Uh, we also have Melissa here, by the way, because it's a Nog episode, and so this is <laughs> going to be a lot of fun, everybody. I'm sorry for jumping in there. I wanted to squeeze out the last bits of information. Okay. Let's have some fun. Sorry, what were you saying, Sirak? I was just going to add a little bit of Chip Chalmer. Yeah. History for everybody out there. Um, he was an AD also on Melrose Place, the A team. Okay. So, and, my, <laughs> and Miami Vice, and Miami Vice. Wow. So he's got a lot of experience in television. Uh, and he also directed Take Me Out to the Hollow. Yes. Ah, so I yes. oh, love That's that one. <laughs> great episode. Yeah. Yes. That's a funny story. I should be on for that one because that has. Yes. <laughs> you know, that, that, how that came about is a good story, actually. We would love anyway, that. I'm talking uh, about that. Yeah. Yeah, because Take Me Out to the Hollow Suite is one of those episodes where I feel like when I first saw it back in the day, I was like, oh, interesting, a baseball episode. But looking back on it and revisiting it, it just feels like one of the best episodes ever. It's, it's so freaking so fun great. and amazing yes. and beautiful. So we can't wait to talk about that. But Sorok's like, yeah, but I can't wait to talk about this episode right now. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> We've got a, a nice juicy pie in front of us that we can yes. slice up in yes. this episode. Um, yes. I, I love this episode. Um, I found myself laughing out loud a few times. And this was one of those things where you put comedy in into yeah. a very serious show actually at a serious time in this show but the comedy is such i was like i was welcoming it because i felt like i needed a little bit of laugh after going through all the stuff we've been through with this first six episode arc in season six yeah um can you talk about like a little bit of of the the placement of the comedy and kind of even the idea to to go ferengi centric on this episode well sure by season six you know, my my feelings towards the Ferengi were extremely complicated. You know, <laughs> um, I wouldn't go far as to say the love hate relationship, but you know, there were times, and I know I'm not the only one. I know many fans at the time, and probably still now, were questioning it too. Um, you know, the validity of trying to go for these comedic episodes. Uh, I think I've mentioned before in interview, you know, one thing that, that Rick Berman and I actually did agree on. And uh, by the way, I think Rick turned 76 on Christmas day. So wow. he's oh, my happy birthday. So, happy birthday. Yeah. Um, one Mr. of the things Berman. we agreed on 
was it got to a point, I don't know if it was in season four or season five, we turned in these Ferengi scripts. And at this point, Rick wasn't giving a lot of notes. <laughs> given up on the show but he would say <laughs> stuff and he meant it he meant it he goes you know it's never going to be as funny on the stage as it is on the page and that was the thing i kept the same lesson i was often being taught because you know star trek on the whole not that it doesn't do it at times and do it well it's not geared for comedy you know, we didn't have comedy directors. I mean, Rene Aubergine was the closest we had to someone who really understood comedy in his bones, you know, mm. but we didn't have uh, uh, comedy directors. The show didn't think in comedic ways. And, mm. you know, uh, it, 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 it was asking a lot. And often I felt that, you know, I'd come away going, why the effing hell are we continuing to put ourselves through this? You know, <laughs> it, it's just not, it's either too broad or it's, or the, 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 the rhythm is wrong. Comedy is about rhythm. It's about mm -hmm. how comedy is shot. You know, mm -hmm. comedy isn't about singles. Most of the time it's about two shots, you know, you, you know, you, you had very few shots of Laurel and Hardy or Abner Costello or Martin Luther King or whoever, or Dumb and Dumber, you know, where they're in separate <laughs> shots. It's, you know, going back and forth over shoulder shots. No, you need them both in the same shot. Mm -hmm. The comedic duo, you know, you got to see both their reaction, all that kind of stuff. A lot of times, you know, it, it didn't work. But I will say this. You know, having watched it, and I was very apprehensive. I have not watched a, a Deep Space Nine episode since uh, Far Beyond the Stars at the convention in the Vegas. Mm -hmm. That's the last time I've seen a Deep Space Nine episode. That was like five years ago. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so I really wasn't in the uh, in 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 the headspace, and you know, since we lost you know, Aaron and, and Renee, that doesn't make it any easier. Hans Beimler is going through a, a really tough time now. I just mm -hmm. visited Hans. We don't have to get into this now, but Hans's health is, is troublesome at best and is not going to get better. So, so the whole thing about revisiting the episode, I felt a little, I kept saying to myself, why not far beyond? The, why aren't I here for far beyond the stars, or even my way, or, uh, or you know, uh, why am I? Why am I doing the Ferengi episode? Uh, but I have to say, I, I had some laughs. You know, there were times yeah. I, 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 you know, it's amazing shows in seven freaking days. You know, seven yeah. days. Holy mm. Christ! With all those people. It, yeah. it, you know, it needed more time. It needed more love and attention. But that being said, you know, it was a fantastic cast. Um, but so anyway, that none of that answers the question of what the hell we did it for. Uh, we did it because <laughs> of exactly why you think we did it, because the shows were getting darker and darker. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we just wanted to, uh, you know, lighten it up a bit. Mm -hmm. it, it was also something that, you know, drove us uh, often, the thing that drove us uh, to do what we did a lot of the times, it's that it, it was to foil fan expectations. You know, it was like, we're not doing the show for the fans. We don't care about the fans. You know, we're doing the show for us. We're doing this. We have to like the show. No one else has to like the show. Mm. Um, and so what? to see you know we want to see a little humor if the fans get on board with it they can or they cannot it, it doesn't matter and i wish more tv nowadays or films cared less about fan response mm. and more about doing what uh, your heart tells you to do i think we'd be in better shape but uh, mm. yeah. so and also you know i had this thing that i used to say all the time with armin you know, I always felt that Armin 
you know, he resented, which may be a strong word, he resented the fact that, you know, he was Quark and he was, he was not a hero. He was surrounded by heroes. And I kept saying, we don't need another goddamn hero on the show. We have heroes coming out of our walls, man. We have so many to trip over a goddamn hero. How many heroes have you met in your life? They're not there, you know, you can go eight weeks, months and not meet a hero. On, on the yeah. Space Nine, you turn around, you bump your nose against the hero. <laughs> the last thing we needed was another hero. But then it was the idea of, okay, let's let's show that even the Ferengi can be heroes. Let's give them their heroic moment and then never do it again. You know, Nog, <laughs> Nog was a different case. Nog was Starfleet. I'm not talking about Nog. But no. let's give... You know, and so then I started thinking, what what's what's heroic? You know, what would be fun? You know, what's the least for anything I could think of? And that was the the magnificent seven. That's what came to me, that we could actually make, <laughs> even though the plot has nothing to do with the magnificent seven, nothing at all. Uh, but the idea of getting a bunch of Ferengi together to do a heroic act and seeing in spite of themselves, in spite of all their, you know, their mendacity and their, and their greed and all those things that, that, that make a Ferengi a Ferengi, in spite of that, they can rise above themselves and, and do something heroic. After all, it's Bamugi. Originally, it was supposed to be Grand Zek. Who they okay. were, oh. but, but Wally wasn't available, hmm. so, okay. so so it became uh, Moogie, which is fine. But originally, we thought about you got to save the Grand Nagus. Uh, uh, but 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 Moogie, you know, even though it's for some of the others, there was less of a of a need to save Moogie. I mean, really, that's Quark, Ram, and and Nog. Um, but it still worked. So, so that was the the thing. Let's do something a little lighter that'll surprise people, um, and and let's make it so that everywhere the eye looks, it's a goddamn Ferengi. You can't get away. From it. <laughs> you want to not in this episode, pal. You know, <laughs> keep them closed for five minutes, open them again. It's still Frank. God. There's more of them now. <laughs> yeah. And there really wasn't there really wasn't a uh, a B plot in this episode. Yeah, right. This is this is like all A plot. Well um, also, but long- Yeah, I mean, look at it. When I watched it again, I mean, you know how much story we had to fit in? You know, mm. it, that, yeah. that, it could have been another 20 minutes easily of just mm-hmm. on the station, you know, complications. I mean, it, it's amazing how much we were able to fit in. So, no, this was not a B story type of you cannot have a show that's going to start from zero and wind up with gathering a band of Ferengis to go off on a mission together, a dangerous <laughs> mission, you know, yeah. and then have time. To do, you know, what what is Cisco and Dax doing on the station? It just right. wasn't yeah. possible. Yeah, I actually remember when there was ten minutes left in the episode, and they still and because I, I remember this episode, and they still hadn't shot Keevan. And I remember thinking, how the hell did they squeeze all of that into the last <laughs> ten minutes? And I thought the same thing. This thing could have had another thirty minutes from here, where there's. Yeah. There's lies and ins and outs, and then the, they have to make sure the Jem Hadar leave and all these other you know complications. But you had to wrap it up because there's so much to set up because you have to explain why there are all these extra Ferengi jumping in. They're not an already made crew. Did you feel yeah. that pressure? Was there a lot of kind of killing your baby saying, I really want this scene, but I have to cut it out to fit this yeah, other stuff? Yeah, we, we had to. I mean, I'm, I was amazed. How, how I, I had the same feeling as you did watching it, you know, and I, I, I hadn't even, you know, 
it took me a minute to remember that key. Yes. The whole thing was about key bomb being killed. And then the weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> <thing. Yeah>. uh, <laughs> but again, it was like, when is that going to happen? Yeah. When it, we're running out of time, when is that going to happen? So I was, I was happy to see, and then it gets wrapped up so quickly. I mean, it's really, you don't even have time to take a breath, you know, uh, you know, uh, I, I remember that famous moment, which I've talked about before, when after we had done Far Beyond the Stars and I I, I talked to, to Avery and I was just like so jazzed after that episode, after I, I watched the cut of it, I was so jazzed. And I remember, I don't know if I called him or it was in person, I remember, I said, Avery, man, we did it, you know, it, it really came out. It's it's really good. And Avery's response, perfect response was, should have been a two-parter. It's like, <laughs> can't you do anything? Can't you just for a second say, yeah, it's good. And so what I'm thinking is I should have responded with, and so should the magnificent Ferengi. Could you imagine if I said that to him? If he said, Army of the Stars, and I came back with, yes, and the magnificent Ferengi. Yeah, I'm going to die on this hill. <laughs> there you go. But, uh, Never enough yeah. time. But you know. even still, um, you managed to fit so much information into this episode. We got Diff- nuanced characters each Ferengi was their own person you you got that they had their own agenda and they still had time to have these side conversations like Ishka talking to um Yilgren about her her firm skin yeah and and all of that and you never lose the urgency in in what they're trying to accomplish as a whole so I don't know where I'm going with this, but it, it, it it's nice to see. It's refreshing to see because we don't always get that with um, some newer stuff. <laughs> well, you know, you just have a really good point, a really good point. In fact, you made a point that for me that now I don't have to make because you kind of made it. And it's my mantra and it's always been my mantra. And even a show that like Magnificent Ferengi, if looked at it or thought about it it just seems like a totally plot driven show talk about a plot i mean saving your mother from the bad guys that's that's just plot and and how the engine of that show can be plot but actuality it's the characters and the fact that we take the time to that every single character is given a specific you know a specific point of view a specific take you know, and obviously we had the Mac. That's where we drew on the Magnificent Seven. You know, in that mm-hmm. remembering how you can sketch a character by giving him one motivating need, a want. You know, and and that tells the audience who that character is. We were also lucky mm-hmm. that a couple of these people had been in previous episodes, so they, you know, you 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 had seen them already, uh, which was which was really good. But yes, even even you know. The 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 Vortas had very different individual, you know, characters. And I thought, you know, that was that was really good. But uh, you know, the the thing that really impressed me was was yeah, you can make fun of the big ears and all the stuff about uh greed and 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 misogyny, but those those were all really good actors, really fine actors, you know, and, and they, and they really knew how to sell it. They, they really knew how to, how to sell their little time. Anytime the camera was on them, they knew how to own that camera. So good on them. Yeah. You answered my question. I was going to ask, what was it about the Magnificent Seven that you did borrow from? And you answered that question. You said by giving each character one kind of uh, story that drives them, one thing that that defines their purpose in the you know in, in the story. But uh, back to the dialogue once again. You know, you you wrote this stuff, you and Hans, and I love the the language. Um, 
and and the, some of the thing that makes DS9 so exceptional to me is the way that you have the dialogue, the way you put conflict and the way you add drama, the way the honesty is there. And I think that reflects, Ira, who you are. You're very, you know, blunt and 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 to the point, but really honest and sincere. So I, I love those things about you. And that's what I feel when I watch this episode. And I'll give you an example. When Brunt comes into the room and he goes through the lineup of everybody that's there and he says, yes. a shy, a moron, a failure. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was harnessing Ira right there, right? <laughs> I mean, that, that to me, is that's like, I loved it. The writing's so great. It's like right to the point. And and I'm in like, you know, not only is it all these guys, but I'm in too. count me in. So I love that. Um, the writing, it's just it's it's just beautiful. And it made me laugh. Literally, I had to go back a few times to watch scenes over. Yeah. And I found myself rewinding, rewinding. Let me see how, um, you know, Nog had a couple of lines right when he when they kind of confront him about joining in. And he's like, not me. And I just watched him <laughs> say, not me. I went back and saw like three or four times just to see that first facial expression he gives. Like, I'm not, don't even waste your time. But let me go to my next question, though. And that is the Ferengi identity. You say you've always struggled with the Ferengi, that they were kind of, you know, you had conflicts about what they were being portrayed as. And I feel like that's what you identified in this episode, not only in the description of who the characters were, you have these people. But you use the fact that their greed, you use their greed and their logic and their and their desire to you know get this platinum to show that they have this courage. They also have courage and they also can be motivated to kind of, you know, get the right results. And I just love that kind of clever storytelling. I want to let you expand upon that. Well, you know, I mean, that was part of the the job that, you know, Michael set out for us and that I, being there at the beginning, chose to pick up and carry, which was, you know, why the hell do we have a Ferengi on this TV series of all the races and of all the species? Why a Ferengi? Mm -hmm. I mean, Captain's Holiday and, and, and you know, they, they didn't have like this great history on the series, you know, in the franchise of let's talk about all the great Ferengi episodes. Um, so, you know, then it became a thing of, of having to make it work, having to make it work, having to find where are the bona fides of, of having, you know, the Ferengi culture on the show, it could have receded into the background, you know, mm -hmm. and, or it could have been dealt with and the ch choice was to deal with it. So, you know, it goes back to the Ferengis, you know, finding the key to them, which was that they're the most human uh, characters on the show. I used to say besides O'Brien, they were the most human characters on the show. <laughs> and, and given the world in 2021, I think they're a lot more human than a lot of the humans on this planet right now. Mm. Um, so, so the idea that, you know, I mean, you see it, you said it, you know, Sirach, you see it in the episode. I mean, they're they're all driven by greed, right? That's the thing that thing, you know, and whether it's fifty bars or twenty bars, I mean, that's the thing. But really, you know, you have Leck, who's the James Coburn character who just wants to prove his talent and 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 it's it's all about, you know, finding, you know, an opposition worthy of yeah. of testing him. He's always testing himself, you know. Yeah. Um, and 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 brunt you know you know needing to get into the good graces again um mm. they all had something and nog you know the great thing about nog and it's amazing to me you know mm. again when i i think of the way characters on the show including your own Sirach, grew over the seven years as opposed to some of the other series. Um, and you look at Nog in that episode, and we did nothing. We didn't have to say, we didn't make a big deal 
you know, at that point, we didn't have to make a big deal about Nog being in Starfleet anymore. I mean, that was kind of like a given, you know, uh, it, 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 it wasn't a push pull anymore. Uh, but to think of that kid on the promenade and in the school in those that first season and to see him, you know, as this maturing, you know, adult, you know, mm -hmm. and a leader, you know, uh, it re again, because I don't watch the show and haven't seen the show. It, everything just stands out in such relief when you watch it after, like you said, being five years away. It's like, what wow, a you know, that's uh, <laughs> uh, he was he was really uh, he did a really, really good job. I thought it was going to be tough to watch it first, you know, uh, but but I just it was just good to 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 see him and, know that, and, and that, that he he did it. And part of Nog's motivation, which you made clear in this episode, was the allure of being treated like uh, yes. Commander Ward, right? Yes. yes. Dude, let's talk about <laughs> that, that a bit. We've got to hit our break, but that that's great stuff there, and I want to spend a lot of time on that hopefully uh we're going to take a very quick break uh everybody you're in for a treat there's even more ira on the way if you can believe that uh, we'll be right back on the other side on the seventh rule <laughs> 